Well, my humans, we're going to do our last section in Chapter 7, our revolved solids. We're going to be doing the shell method today. So our objectives are that we're going to use the shell method. The shell method is cool because it's a great way of managing the holes. The difference is that the representative rectangle is parallel, not perpendicular, to the axis of rotation. So I've drawn two images. I've drawn the horizontal axis of rotation and a vertical axis of rotation. Noticing that my representative rectangles are parallel to the axis of rotation, and I've labeled my dy and my dx. So here are a couple of the differences. So I'm always going to look for the distance to the axis of revolution. So in this case, I'm going to call it y. And over here, I'm going to call it x. Okay, And that's going to be technically p of y. And this would be p of x. And then the other information that I want is the height of the rectangle. And that's going to be this distance here. And I'm going to call that h of y. And over here, here's the height of my rectangle. And I'm going to call it h of x. Okay. So the formula is a little bit different than the other ones that we've had. So it's going to be the volume is equal to 2 pi. Again, notice that this is a little bit different. On my horizontal, so because I have a dy, I'm going to integrate from c to d. And it's going to be p of y, h of y, dy. <clears throat> and then my vertical axis over here, the volume is going to be 2 pi. Integrating from a to b, I guess I should put those on there. That's a and that's b and this is C, and this is D, and then I'm going to have P of X, and then H of X, DX. So let me just make sure that we know what those are. P of X or Y is going to be the distance to the axis of rotation from your representative rectangle, cost in the way, and then h of x, oops, that's an x or y, is going to be equal to the height of your representative rectangle. Okay? Alrighty, so let's do some examples. I think they're really nice because they really don't have to worry about the whole. And again, I'm going to write out the words one time, and then after that, I will abbreviate. So this is find the volume of the solid of revolution Whew, so much writing formed by the region bounded by y is equal to x minus x cubed. We're going to be bound by the x-axis. We're going to be bound by 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1. And we're going to revolve about the y-axis. Okay, so remember in the shell method, my representative rectangle is parallel and I'm just going to write that word because that's the big difference between the methods. So if I start by <clears throat> drawing my region, y is equal to x, cube, x minus x cubed from 0 to 1. It's going to look like this. Okay. So this is 0. This is 1. Here's my representative rectangle. I'm revolving about the y-axis, so I have a dx. Okay. So the distance to from the axis of rotation and my rectangle, I'll put it up here, this distance I'm going to call x, and then the height of my rectangle, h of x, is going to equal the curve x minus x cubed minus 0, just so we can see that, so x minus x cubed. So my volume is going to equal 2 pi. I'm integrating from 0 to 1, p of x, is going to be x. My h of x is going to be x minus x cubed. There's my dx. OK. 
okay? So I could simplify this if I wanted. There's really no need, reason to if you're integrating in your calculator. This is x squared minus x to the fourth dx. And so my volume is going to equal 4 pi over 15. So that was pretty easy. All right, let's do our second example. And again, I'm going to use shorthand. So I'm going to have my region bounded by, oops, got the E. I'm going to have x is equal to an e to the negative y squared, the y-axis. And then I'm going to have 0 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1. I want the volume. And we're going to go about the x-axis. So remember that my representative rectangle is going to be parallel to my axis of rotation. So I'm going to have a horizontal rectangle. So if I graph my shape, <clears throat> it's going to end up, here's the curve. Here is y is equal to 1. This is going to be my curve. x is equal to e to the negative y squared. I'm parallel to my axis of rotation. So I'm going to call that dy. So because I'm going to use the shell method, I need to identify my p of x or p of y. So this is going to be y. The height of my rectangle, h of y, is going to equal e to the negative y squared over to the axis of revolution minus 0. Okay, So it's just going to be the e to the negative y squared. So if I set up my equation, the volume is equal to 2 pi integral from, I have a dy, so it's c to d, p of y, h of y, dy. So it's going to be 2 pi. I'm integrating from 0 to 1. My p is y, and then the height of my function is e to the negative y squared dy. Simplifying is really not possible. It's just going to kind of look like that. So I'm going to push buttons on my grapher, and I'm going to get 1.986. The bigger issue is just being able to set up the situation. All right, if we move on to example number three. It's going to look a little bit different. So find the volume, and we're going to have my region is going to be bounded by bounded by y is equal to x cubed plus x plus 1. And then I have y equals 1, x is 1, and it's going to be about the line x is equal to 2. Okay. Alrighty, so let's just draw what we have. So here's my axes. Okay. I'm going to do it in a different color. This function, this is going to be 1, is going to look the cubic function that's been translated up looks kind of like that. I have y is equal to 1 is here. So this is y equals 1. This is y equals the x cubed plus x plus 1. And then I have x is equal to 1. <clears throat> so here's my image. Okay, and I'm going to revolve it about, put it right there. This is x is equal to 2. Alrighty. So here's my axis of revolution. So I draw my representative rectangle it's parallel to the axis. So I have a dx, but I have a hole. And this is where the shell method is really entertaining. My axis of revolution is over here. So I'm still going to call this distance x, but my p of x is going to equal the 2 all the way to the right minus the quantity x, okay? So if this is x, the distance from the rectangle to the axis of revolution is going to be 2 minus x, and that would be that distance in there, okay? My h of x is going to be the height of the rectangle, which is the x cubed plus x plus 1 minus 1, okay? Alrighty. And that's the 1 from y plus 1. So this is just going to simplify to be x cubed plus x. So the volume, 2 pi, 
I'm integrating with a dx, so I'm going to go from 0 to 1, p of x, 2 minus x, times h of x, x cubed plus x, dx. And I'm out of room, so I'll write my solution up here. So the volume is 29 pi over 15. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's a 15. It doesn't matter whether your answer is in terms of pi, whether it's a decimal. So six of one, half a dozen, dozen of another. So the cool thing about the shell method is it manages this whole very nicely. All right, I have one more example. So for example four, we want the volume of the revolved solid bounded by the regions. Um, y equals 10 over x squared, y equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 5. And then we're going to be rotated about the y-axis. Oops, that's an S. So I'm going to draw my shape. Okay, so here's my axes. So 10 over x squared, so we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0, is going to be this curve. I'm going to go from x is equal to 1, and then x is equal to 5. Here we go. <clears throat> so this is my region that's going to be revolved about this. So that means that my representative rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation. So I have a dx. Okay. I'm going to call my p of x, I'm going to call the, the distance from here to the axis is going to be x. And then my height, h of x, is going to be the 10 over x squared minus 0. So it's just going to be the 10 over x squared. Okay. I really don't have to manage the whole because here's my axis of rotation, the distance to p of x to the middle of the rectangle is x. So my volume equation is really pretty simple. So volume is going to equal 2 pi. It's a dx, so I'm going to integrate from 1 to 5. Those are the boundaries of the revolved solid. My p of x was x. My h of x is 10 over x squared. There's my dx. I might write this as 2 pi integral from 1 to 5 of 10 over x dx. And then when I integrate, I get 101.124, and there's my volume. So the shell method really makes managing the holes polite. You just have to remember that the formula is a little bit different. All right, that's it for today. I will see you soon.